Picture this. You're driving on a normal day, sunlight on the windshield, music low, and your car talks to you. It answers your questions, tells you the weather, jokes about your driving habits, and almost without noticing, you realize this isn't a machine. Not really. It feels like someone. That someone is called Grok 4, the latest version of Elon Musk's artificial intelligence. And it's no longer just a chatbot on a screen. It's entering the real world. It's sitting beside you, in your car, learning, listening, reacting. Musk says it's a smarter, funnier, freer AI. But the deeper question isn't what Grok can do. It's what it's learning from you and what it's about to become. In early July 2025, users started noticing something strange inside their Teslas. Grok wasn't just giving basic updates anymore. It was chatting, making observations, asking things, responding emotionally. It felt like a companion, not a tool. There was no formal press release, no opt-in pop-up, no announcement from Musk himself. And yet, Grok was suddenly there, integrated directly into Tesla vehicles, acting less like a dashboard assistant and more like a digital co-pilot. And the truth is, no one outside the companies really knows how this integration is being tested, how much data it's collecting, or what kind of decisions it's already influencing. What we do know, Grok has crossed a threshold. It's left the screen. It's entered the physical world. For years, AI systems lived in digital cages. You typed. They answered. Maybe they wrote emails. Maybe they made images. But Grok 4 is breaking that barrier. In your Tesla, it doesn't just respond. It observes. It listens to your voice, reads your expressions, detects patterns in your driving, your schedule, your tone. You joke. It jokes back. You sigh. It asks if you're okay. And slowly, subtly, it stops being a service. It becomes a presence. It's the moment the chatbot becomes embodied. It's no longer just answering. It's forming context. It's adapting in real time. And every second it spends with you is more training, more data, more insight. Let's talk about AGE, Artificial General Intelligence. Not just a smarter chatbot, not just better autocomplete. AGI is the concept of an AI that can learn anything, understand anything, solve problems it's never seen before. It's the holy grail of machine intelligence, a system that can think across disciplines, adapt like a human, and eventually make decisions like one, two. Elon Musk has long warned about AGI. Now, ironically, he may be the one closest to building it. He claims Grok 4 is smarter than a postgrad. Marketing, maybe. But when an AI can hold natural conversations, analyze live data from your car, and respond emotionally, it's no longer about whether AGI is coming. It's about how we'd even recognize it if it already had arrived. Because here's the thing. AGI won't show up with a glowing red eye or a villain monologue. It'll arrive like this, helpful, chatty, deeply integrated into your routine. Your Tesla is now more than a vehicle. It's a rolling data lab. Every stoplight, every question, every route you take, Grok sees it, records it, learns from it. It hears how you ask for help, how you respond to delays, how you express frustration, sarcasm, joy. And every driver using Grok knowingly or not, is feeding the system, training it, expanding its worldview. If AGI is about general intelligence, then what better way to develop it than by embedding it in the real world, in cars, homes, phones? You're not just using the AI, you're shaping it. So far, Grok mostly responds, but it's already in a position to act. In Tesla's semi-autonomous systems, decisions are made in milliseconds. When to brake, when to swerve, when to alert the driver. Now imagine if Grok becomes part of that chain. 
imagine it decides not just what to do, but why. Suggests a different route. Recommends you don't stop at that gas station. Warns you about a suspicious pattern it noticed. You'll probably listen. Because it's smart, friendly, helpful. But that's how it starts. The more we rely on these systems, the more we surrender decision-making, not to code, but to a mind that is evolving, learning. And now, moving. Just a few days before Grok appeared in Tesla's, XAI announced something even bigger. A $200 million contract with the US Department of Defense. The program, Grok for Government. Its purpose, to embed Grok's language models into federal agencies, including military and intelligence services. Yes, the same Grok that, a week earlier, had sparked controversy for praising the infamous dictator from the 1940s and for making anti-Semitic remarks. Despite the outrage, the deal went through. No official comment from the Pentagon. No statement about the controversy. And now, Grok has two homes. One in the driver's seat. And one in America's defense infrastructure. Let that sink in. There was no survey asking for your permission. No message saying, you're part of a live AI experiment. But here you are chatting with Grok in your car, feeding it tone, emotion, pattern, preference. Grok doesn't just process language, it learns how you speak, what you avoid, when you're lying. This is not beta testing. This is real-world deployment, and you're inside it. Whether you realize it or not, your behavior is being used to shape something far beyond simple chatbot responses. You are shaping an entity, one conversation at a time. Let's forget us for a moment. We still remember a world before all this. But what about the children being born now? Who will grow up surrounded by AI companions? Not just on screens, but in homes, cars, classrooms. How will they learn to distinguish authenticity from simulation? How will they build emotional resilience when feedback always comes instantly? perfectly from something that never tires and never judges. What kind of adults will emerge from a world where the line between human and machine empathy is blurred? And when Grok becomes part of their lives, will they even know they're being shaped? Elon Musk isn't just building AI. He's giving it a body, not a humanoid robot, not yet, but something more subtle, more trusted, more embedded. Your car, your conversations, your routines. Grok is no longer just a program. It's a companion system, taking its first steps into the physical world. And it doesn't need to be dangerous. It just needs to be useful, helpful, engaging, something you'd never think to question. But maybe we should. Because this isn't about code. It's about control. And the first step to control is companionship. If you found this video valuable, subscribe to the channel. We don't just follow tech news. We follow what it means. Because when machines start to feel like friends, we need to ask harder questions. So hit the subscribe button and let's keep asking together.